Okay, Jeremy, please uh, let people in that are still coming in late here. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Dawson Blank. I'm the executive director at the Minnesota Youth Athletic Services. Um, we're excited to be at this time of the year again. Um, this is my 17th Gopher State Tournament of Champions. I've been at the MYS since 1999, and every year this is an exciting time of year. Um, on the call is Jeremy Innes. He is the associate director at MYS and uh, heads up the baseball department. We have Bobby Strickland, who is the Gopher State Tournament of Champions uh, director, and he's also a program director at the MYS. Eric Rathke is on. Uh, he's been a longtime senior program director. Uh, and Adam Cook, I believe, is on as well, and he is a coordinator at the MYS and has helped us tremendously on the baseball side as well. So, and then the other individual that's on um, is Akua Kennedy. Um, he is uh, on the baseball side at MYS, but he's also our community engagement director. Uh, you may have met him at tournaments in the past or seen him around. We're excited to have him on the team as well. So we'll get right into it. Um, the, the whole point of this tonight is to ensure we're all on the same page, both the host group and the tournament directors. This is probably redundant for some people, uh, but I think it's important for us to kind of reset and see some things that are on a uh, presentation to ensure we're on the same page. And if you have additional questions, you have a couple days here to ask. We are going to, or this is being recorded, so we will be able to share this out uh, to everybody and those that couldn't make it tonight. I think ultimately for the tournament directors, you're representing yourself. Uh, obviously you have a passion for sports as well because of the work you do with us, but you're also in a, um, a representative of our organization. Uh, and we hope that you hold that in high regard as you represent the coming weekends at the uh, ball fields. And for the host groups, um, we know that you are here because this is a fundraising mechanism for your association uh, or your booster group. Um, we also know that you're excited to showcase the fields in your community. Um, and I think ultimately you want to make sure that all the participating teams from the Metro, from greater Minnesota are going to have a great time at your complex or field. So um, we all have that shared goal of providing a safe, positive, productive experience for everybody that's in the, in the tournaments coming up. We're excited to say that we have an all-time high of number of teams. We have over 570 teams participating over the three weekends of play. Um, so that is awesome to see that after the pandemic, uh, both last year and this year, people want to continue to play the great game of baseball. So that being said, we'll get into it. Um, I gave an intro. Um, as I mentioned, you guys, everybody on this call is a, a vital component to the success of this tournament. Just some things that we're going to kind of go through, but in general, um, it kind of lists out it lists out what tournament directors are responsible for. Um, you are in you are in collaboration at all times with the host group um, lead, along with all the representatives or volunteer staff. Um, and we hope everybody works in harmony with each other to make that happen, because there will be satellite locations at some tournaments. And that means that there's gonna be additional communication or correspondence that's needed. So we can make sure to get that set up right away. So when the tournament begins, everybody's on the same page and knows who to contact when and when to get information to uh, the tournament director and um, how the uh, host group can assist uh, with the tournament operations. Just a note, uh, we're requesting that all tournament directors this year wear MYS logoed um, t-shirts. This is another way for people to see the brand and for people to know that you are representing our organization. There will be additional shirts that you can pick up at the office when you pick up your supplies for your tournament. Um, 
I'm all the hosts again. You're the tournament partner. You share in the proceeds. This is your fundraising mechanism. Um, you are have all the on-site staffing with field maintenance, concessions, uh, any additional staff that are going to be available at satellite locations. Um, make sure you read over the contract again that you signed uh, and make sure that you're on the same page. If you have any questions following this meeting, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, so I'm just going to start out really quick. Um, at the MOS for 31 years, we have done a great job of promoting, administering, uh, putting together tournaments. Once the tournaments are over, we have recognized that we maybe don't do as great of a job highlighting what's happening at your specific locations during the tournament weekends because we have historically as programmers moved on to the next weekend or moved on to the next thing that we have going on. We've partnered with a gentleman named Joe Ruland. Um, he runs a, a group called Your Time Performance. He was a former president of Andover Baseball Association who I worked with a long time ago to help create the um, Gopher State Baseball All-Star Series um, in 2009. And so I just want you to understand what we're doing. This is an opportunity for all of you, if you wanna get this to your um, volunteers as well, we want to capture as many moments as possible during the weekend. So we would like anybody, regardless of what your role is, if it's gonna be a coach, if it's gonna be a parent, if it's gonna be a host group rep, if it's gonna be tournament director, the athletic trainer, it doesn't matter. We would love to capture still photos, videos of great moments during a game or big big hits or uh, walk-off hits, whatever it may be. We wanna capture those and we want to try to get those to this hashtag GSTC moments. And then you would uh, put the age level after that. So we would encourage you to participate in this process. We will get you additional information. There will be information at the um, tournament headquarters. We'll be promoting this. It'll be all over our social media as well, but there'll be a couple ways to do it through the hashtag GSTC moments along with a website that we'll be sharing tomorrow as well. So sit back and watch this really cool little promo. So that went out um, to on our social media channel. It's gonna there's gonna be a, a more um, detailed one that's gonna go out tomorrow, and we're gonna continue to share that to add impressions. We also did create a fan guide um, for each weekend of play. Right now, we have the July 8th through the 10th weekend out, and so that uh, incorporates all the schedules. It talks about our um, youth first accredited tournament environment. Uh, it talks about this. It talks about all the other things. It, it showcases your location um, and the details around the parks that you have or the ball fields that you're using. Um, so it's a that's going to be another great um, resource for participants this coming weekend. I'm going to skip past this. Joe couldn't be on with us, but I do have a slide at the end. I just wanted people to listen to. Um, no matter what role you have, you have a um, you have a role to play in the experience of all the participants. So I'll move on with that. All right, next, uh, since 2019, MYS Gopher State has partnered with Youth First. Um, uh, you may be reminded of that or remember it. Uh, we, uh, as an organization, we have a goal of promoting sportsmanship. That's one of our goals. And as you all know, there is an extreme shortage of umpires right now, um, and we're at a crisis. 
Uh, we need to do whatever we can within the environments that these umpires are um, officiating in to ensure that we can keep them in the game. So this is a big initiative of ours, uh, along with Minnesota softball. We have teamed up for our Overstate Tournament Champions, their Minnesota State Softball Championships, where it's both youth first accredited tournaments. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to the, uh, our, our strategic partner and the founder director, Mark Argus, for him to give further explanation on what's gonna be happening at your site this weekend. Thanks, Mark. Hey, thanks, Dawson. Yeah, thanks everybody for uh, all the things you're doing in the next couple of weeks and providing a great experience for the kids. Um, you've probably seen uh, some of our materials in the past. We've updated some of these now to what we're calling our Youth First Alliance, which includes Minnesota USA Softball and MYS with all their programs. And, and uh, we're excited about uh, kind of formalizing that alliance. We've uh, created a review committee now that uh, you know, if there are incident things that have happened uh, through the summer, we've taken a look at those and made recommendations to help support community associations and some of those groups that you're partnered with, and it's gone, gone really well. So what do we need from you the next few weekends? Well, you'll get, uh, again, a, a number of posters, some of our posters and banners that uh, we'd like you to display up and around the dugout entrances and high traffic areas, places where parents might be sitting, you know, to get the message in front of them. Um, just the more signage that we can do, the better. Uh, you'll have some posters that um, can go up by either a bracket area or concessions area, those high traffic places. And that'll help us just continue to um, kind of bang the drum on some of the emails and things that have gone out and the videos that have gone out ahead of time. Um, also, there'll be in the packet some cards for our umpires. We call them our pocket reminder cards, which are basically a little business card um, reminders that are handed out to the, uh, uh, the coaches, um, basically just a business card size. Uh, the umpire should get two of those cards, one for each team uh, for their pregame meeting for every game that they play and along with the scorecard. So what will happen is the umpire will address the coaches at a pregame meeting, just remind them of the youth first conduct environment and uh, that they're gonna be actually voting on their team, uh, the coach, uh, coaches, parents, fans in the stands, players uh, at the end of each game. And they'll do that on a scorecard. So it's a pretty simple process that the umpires are helping us with. And, and again, if you can just help make sure that those materials are in their hands and and they can get that vote done uh, after every game, that'd be great. And then we're tracking that, of course, into the uh, reporting system. We'll, we look for the teams that get exemplary scores from the umpires and make that a big deal. We've got a, almost a full month of recognition events with the Twins, the Saints, and the Northwoods League teams uh, around the Twin Cities area uh, to recognize teams and umpires and you know, that uh, are really helping us with this environment. So. So again, we appreciate all your help and, and the time that you put in and, and uh, helping us promote that. And, and again, you know, one of the main reasons, as Dawson mentioned, is the shortage of officials. And part of that, I think sometimes we don't think about it, but when you think about the, the weekends coming up, you've got what, almost 600 teams of kids playing uh, baseball in the next three weekends. And out of those teams, that's, that's a lot of future umpires if we do our job. And if we can make sure that the umpires that do work these three weekends have a good experience, the, the kids see that, you know, hey, this is a possibility, something I could do in the future, rather than having, you know, one person, uh, you know, in the crowd or one coach get on an umpire or something, uh, then the kids are less likely to be one of those when they grow up someday. So, so anyway, we appreciate your help in the process and I wish everybody the best. All right, thank you, Mark. I would just implore all the uh, host reps that are on and then all the tournament directors, if you hear something, please remind people that they are part of a youth first accredited tournament. And obviously what that means is people are following through on the three things you see on your screen. It's about the kids, respect officials and your opponent and uh, keep competitive energies in check. So. If there is uh, unsportsmanlike conduct um, and negative behavior, it's all spell, spelled out in the rules on what needs to be done. 
um, that if there's a violation of the MYS Youth First uh, Code of Conduct policy, then action can be taken. And that's the protest committee that is made up of the umpire in chief, the tournament director, and the main host representative, along with MYS team members that are on call. So we need to take this all seriously and we need, just need to create a great environment for everybody the next three weekends. So again, thanks, Mark. All right, I'm gonna introduce Bobby Strickland and Bobby's gonna go through more of the administrative side. So Bobby, take it away. You're on mute. I wanna echo to what uh, Dawson and Mark mentioned. We just wanna thank you guys so much for uh, helping host this tournament and for our tournament directors for stepping up to work these weekends. Um, that helps us out majorly. Um, and to the youth first stuff too, I kind of just wanna speak on that. We know things aren't gonna change overnight. We understand that, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to chip away. We're trying to get these coaches, these parents to see youth first everywhere they go. And we're starting to try to ingrain it into their brain that they really need to change how they operate and change how we do things here because this is not sustainable how it's going right now. So please everybody make sure every field, every site, every game, every situation is important. So please try to do your part to help us all out in the future. Um, okay, back to tournament stuff. Um, now, this is going to be more towards the host group. Um, we do need one person in charge um, from the host group. We will have tournament directors on staff, but we do need somebody from the host group to be the, the main point of contact. Contact Now, you guys know your fields better than our tournament directors do. We will take your views into account when it comes to, you know, Hopefully we don't have any, but weather delays, anything like that. So we want you guys helping make those kind of calls. So please make sure there is a point person that is available. Um, they are communicating throughout the weekend and, and just somebody that we can depend on. Um, for your facilities, um, keep the fields groomed, um, keep them playable. We ask, we really prefer that you guys can do this between every game, especially for our GSTC. Um, we would like concessions in as many locations as possible. Um, that is a huge help for us. Um, restrooms and garbages, it seems like such a small thing, but it can have such a huge effect. It is the little things at these sites that people do remember. Um, athletic trainer is a big one. Uh, we do need to have one on site. A lot of times you don't recognize how big of a problem it is until you don't have one and something happens. So please don't ever get to that spot. If you need any help booking one, please email me. I have a couple contacts we can reach out to and get them set up. Um, after the tournament, you'll simply uh, submit that invoice and we will reimburse half of the trainer fee for the weekend, um, up to $15 an hour. Uh, for apparel sales, um, if people are making checks, if you are accepting checks, um, they make them out to the host group. And at the end, you guys will either write a check or um, even out the money with our tournament director before they leave the site. Um, for the award ceremonies, now many of the brackets are set up on Sunday to where third place and the championship game end at the exact same time. Um, we'll always have our tournament director ready to do 100% to do that championship game. So if it is needed to step in and help out with the championship presentation or third place, we ask that you guys make yourselves available to do that. I want to go back to the um, to the athletic trainer. We go through Save a Life. We have very good contacts there. Um, they've been great for us in the past. So yeah, like I said, just email me if you need those contacts. I'll just like to note too, Bobby, on the award ceremonies, if you are the host group that has to take on maybe the third place game because they get done simultaneously, as a rule of thumb, we give a big shout out and thank you to the participating teams we thank your host group. Um, and then we ask that both teams line up on the, each respective baseline. And we um, then ask the head coach of the runner up team or the second place team or the fourth place team to uh, say all the players on their team, they come forward and then we put the, uh, provide the cube or whatever award that you're giving out to each uh, team. And then we recognize by Big shout out to the fourth place team of for the 2022 Gover State Tournament Champions. And then we move on to the third place team or the championship team. Um, we we want to try to make it a big uh, celebration 
for the teams that got to that point. All right, so pre-event, tournament directors, it is very important for you guys to be at our office in a timely manner to pick up your materials so that you can be at the fields two hours early for the GSTC. You will have teams wanting to check in an hour and a half to two hours early. Um, they're ripping and raring and ready to go. So please make sure you're ready to do that. Uh, if you can be there, get some stuff set up, but make sure that you have your little check-in station set up so that when teams come up, you're prepared to get them through and on to their warmups. Um, hosts, like we talked about, please make sure to have a trainer, on-site medical personnel. Um, confirm that we have everything locked down with the fields. We don't want any last second, anything to be thrown into this. Um, make sure your uh, concessions are set up. You got your equipment set, everything, scheduler, everything. So please confirm your volunteer workforce as well. We've had groups too um, in the past, not necessarily for GSTC, but um, you know where they have maybe a group of people they're not super dependent on or a group that they can't really trust or a group of kids or something, please make sure that you can trust the people that are working for you here and that you're communicating with them and everybody's on the same page. All right, event setup. Now, when you get to the tournament, tournament directors, find your host contact and introduce yourself right off the bat. Um, for some of those satellites fields, make sure you talk with the host representative and make sure that you get those numbers and that those groups are sending you pictures of the scorecards. It's important that we get those scorecards in a timely manner and get our scores and pitches updated especially um, towards the end of the day on Saturday. That is very important because we have teams wanting to know if they're gonna make it to bracket play. Um, so please make sure to get that info fast. Um, make sure to organize your tournament headquarters. You know, this is one of the first things people see when they walk into the park is they check in with you guys, make sure you look organized, make sure you look ready to go. Um, hang up all your banners, signage and messaging as quick as you can when you get there. Um, and make sure to hang your sponsor banners in very high traffic areas, obviously near the entrance, just kind of look around. If you need to talk to the host to figure out where those might be, go ahead and do that. Um, on the flip side, hosts, if you can provide a table and chair for our tournament directors, that would be ideal. Um, and if our tournament director does need any help, maybe he has a few groups checking in right away when he gets there. If he can have any help with um, putting up banners, putting up zip tie, putting up the brackets, anything like that, please make yourselves available if you have the time. Um, just a note for the tournament directors, when you are utilizing um, a duct tape or something like that for the tournament headquarters banner or any other banner, please don't put the tape over the top. Please put it behind the banner. I um, wanna make sure to, that it looks as professional as possible. And make sure two tournament directors like clear it with the host group that you can be taping something to. I've ruined a wall before at a uh, basketball tournament and you don't want to deal with something like that either. Um, okay, so apparel, we do sell t-shirts on site. Um, to start, the tournament directors will give the apparel boxes to the host. The host will go through, they will count those shirts and confirm the numbers on a sheet look correct. If they are not correct, please go through it with the tournament director and we'll get that changed. Um, please sign to confirm that they match up. Um, you will have multiple sheets from the tournament director. You can keep one as your, and you can keep count throughout if you want. Um, at the conclusion of the tournament, uh, like we said, make sure to give them the extra shirts, complete the consignment form, and then collect the check. That's very important tournament directors. Um, if for some reason that host is, I, I believe there's gonna be a couple groups that are gonna reach out to me and they're gonna send us a check in the mail. Just make sure that's cleared at the start of the tournament. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, baseballs and scorecards. We need two baseballs one scorecard each game. Those will go to the umpire group. Um, hosts, if we have any fields that are like pretty far away from where our tournament director is stationed, that'd be awesome if maybe we could get some help running back and forth. Um, but our tournament directors should be able to handle most of that when they're in the same area. Now for some of those fields that are out far, if they're a drive, they're more than a mile or two away, we really need somebody um, with your staff to be able to take pictures and send those scorecards to our umpires. And then one of the most important things here is if you do see a scorecard, if you receive one, whether you're 
a tournament host, whether you're a tournament director, and it does not have yes or no circled, track down that umpire immediately and get that answer for that per, or for that game. We want to make sure that we are accurate with our yeses and nos for this one. Um, yeah, you can move on to the next one, Doss. All righty, team check-in. Um, this will be handled by our tournament director. Like we said, it gets kind of busy there. So if you guys can make yourselves available as tournament hosts to maybe help with some of that other stuff like hanging banners. Um, we allow any person, any representative from the team to check them in, whether it's team manager, team parent, team coach. Um, all we ask for that is the $150 gate fee. We give them a goodie bag in return. We do not need to check Every team's roster, they're all preloaded online. We do not need to check their code of conducts. We'll be doing that prior to the tournament. Um, tournament directors, it is absolutely important that you track who is paying, who is paid with a check number by their name or in cash. So please make sure to note that um, if you miss one, sometimes it's very difficult to figure out where that came from and you don't wanna go around asking all the teams who paid and who didn't. Um, Okay, for the handouts, like I said, one goodie bag. Um, you will also receive, each team will receive bag tags for all the players in the tournament as well. And then we also will be handing out information and reminders for youth first. And not only that, tournament directors, it's not necessarily just handing them documents or handing them sheets. Please try to run through it with the coaches. If you, this is a, also a great time during check in to ask a coach if there's any rules that he isn't that they don't understand because we want those cleared prior to the tournament. This has, we started doing this in the past year, making sure that we are asking this question to every coach that comes through. And we are starting to see a lot more, a uh, lot less issues at tournaments with just knowing the rules and the pitch counts. And as much as you think it's easy for them to go in and get that information, a lot of the time they don't know it. So please run through that again with them. All right, once tournament starts, tournament director, please make sure you are in charge of those umpires when those games start, okay? You need to make sure that they are there. Um, and if they are not there, you need to communicate that to the assigners so they can immediately start reaching out and trying to find new ones. Now, we have great assigners that work our GSTC. We don't typically have issues with umpires not showing or anything like that. And our assigners have made backup plans, I believe, in the case of any emergencies or anything like that. But please make sure to communicate with them. If things are running smoothly, let them know that. If a, if a uh, umpire is doing a great job, make sure to note that because we want to be able to send that information out to their assigners after the tournament. Um, walk around, monitor the games. Um, people know like we said, we want you wearing the shirts with the NYS logo. If you're not at your desk and you're walking around, that's okay. We want, we want people to see you. We want people to know you're around. Um, and if you have, if, if you see somebody acting, acting up, whether it's a coach or parent, feel free to say something to them. Don't be scared. We're never going to say that you have to go up to them and you have to confront them. But if you, if you have to say something to a coach or a parent, settle down, that's okay. We need to start calling people out for some of the bad behavior that we see. Um, please try to take photos um, of the sponsor banners. Please also try to take any photos of anything um, at the sites that you think are noteworthy that we can use for you know anything else that we use. Um, we've touched on the youth sport, youth first sportsmanship initiative. Um, please make sure they're circling yes and no. Um, and you will also take that information and you'll enter it into the computer system. So tournament directors, after each game, you'll be adding the scores, you'll be adding the pitch counts, and you'll be adding the yes or no votes for the uh, youth first. Um, and also we have multiple team members here. I'm going to be on call every weekend. We are here. If you need us, please do not make a hasty call. Please call us and we'll get that information to you. Awards talked about this very shortly. Um, we have 15 awards for each team. We are giving all of those to the teams. Um, if coaches get a few, that's okay. In our mind, they can display those at work. Uh, first place teams get a uh, canvas award. Uh, they're pretty cool. They're about 12. It's like a 12 by 15 award. Um, they get a banner. They also get rings that will be presented to them at the uh, twins game. They'll get a twins ticket order form, a champion t-shirt order form, and 
really important, please take a picture of the first place team with the awards. And like we said, please send it to iDallas. I will be keeping a text chain throughout the tournament and I'll be sending reminders about this. Please keep this in the back of your mind for Sunday. Um, and then the second, third and fourth place teams all get individual cubes. Tournament wrap up, uh, you and the host will go through the leftover apparel. You'll mark it on the consignment form. Um, please make sure the calculations are correct. If you need to double check them, please do. Uh, you will then be paid by the uh, host group and that will be a check that you will bring back to the MYAS. Um, tournament director, take down signage banners. Don't forget if you put one in a weird spot, don't forget that you left it there. Um, make sure all your scores are updated. Um, Thank the hosts and volunteers for their work. And please, if you can have this back to us in a timely fashion on Monday, that would be ideal. Oh, and on the bottom there, the copy of the EMT invoice, please submit that within a few weeks of the tournament. That's to the hosts. Okay, before we um, open it up for any questions that are out there, I just have one other thing um, that I just wanted to pass along. Joe Rulin couldn't be on, but he wanted to pass along something to all of you, no matter what your, what your role is, um, that may help you kind of put things in perspective for this, the next few weekends, if I can get this going here. Hold on a minute. Uh, can anybody else hear this? I cannot. I can't hear this at all. I couldn't hear the first video video you played either, Das. Okay. Can we send this to them afterwards, maybe? Sure. If you can't hear it. All right. That I mean, that's it's basically kind of keeping um, an understanding on you know representing yourself and uh, our organization and that every move you make, um, people are watching you kind of thing. So as the host group, as the tournament director, just keep that in mind um, as you represent yourself and our organization. So um, I guess we'll open it up. Does anybody have any questions? One thing that I'll add while, while people are uh, thinking of their questions is that um, tournament directors, you're gonna have I know we threw a lot of information at both tournament directors and the host tonight. Um, both of you have resources that you'd be able to refer to um, to check on all this information. Tournament directors, you're gonna have a manual within your binder um, that's gonna list everything we covered tonight. Um, hosts, um, please refer to your host contract um, and that should um, contain everything that we discussed here tonight as well. Hey, Dawson, it's Jason. I got a quick question. Yeah. Are we going to, is there any chance to drop stuff off Sunday afternoon, evening? Yeah, I mean, you could, you could reach out to um, Jeremy or myself. We could make it happen. Yeah. Okay. I have a quick question as a host on scheduling. Are you going to mirror prior years times for games, assuming the same number of teams? Just trying to think about our volunteer staffing. If your fields are staying the same, it, it will be pretty much exactly the same. What uh, do you want to shoot me an email and I can I can kind of send you something and tell you if anything's going to change for this year, but I should be able to get you kind of like a rough draft before we come out with them on Friday. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Yep. 
Um, Akua, do you have anything you, you want to add? Keep going down there. Actually, no, Dawson, I'm still at practice. I'm just going to listen to what I've been at practice. Um, all right. Um, well, with that being said, we'll get uh, we'll get this uh, presentation out to everybody tomorrow. And do not hesitate, as Bobby stated, if you have any questions, don't assume. If you're not sure about something as a host rep, as a tournament director, please do not hesitate to reach out anybody, any MOS team member that's on call. There's going to be multiple people available to assist as needed. So please don't hesitate to do that. And, you know, make sure we all remember that um, this is uh, for the youth. Uh, we're here to uh, promote that and we want to make it a great experience for everybody involved. And we need to, like Bobby's talked about before, just keep those people in check that feel that they have to let people know what they think. Um, and show negative behavior and unsportsmanlike conduct because um, they are hurting their team in this environment. They're not going to be able to be rewarded by being a youth first team award winner if they do that. So, all right, uh, everybody have a great uh, night. Enjoy the uh, sun for the next hour, and we'll see you on a ball field soon. Thanks, everyone.